Okay, let's see. It is... Yes, it is 5.15 in the morning. We gotta leave in about 15 minutes to take Monet and the boys to the airport. It's early. idea of how excited Justice Justice is to go to California today. He saw pigeons out in the driveway and said, look, eagles. It's actually kind of cute. Sorry for people that have to wear glasses with masks all the time. got this traveling thing down with these two kids. It's really impressive, but I'm going to miss them. We'll see them in a couple days. are gone it's like a it's like a double-edged sword maybe not the best way to put it but what I'm trying to say is like there is it's nice to have a little bit of freedom I can get other things done a little bit quicker but when they're gone it just reminds me of how much I am no longer made to be on my own like a bachelor I'm, I'm just not made for that life anymore I love my wife I love my kids I just I want to be around them and so you know, probably around like 6 p.m. tonight, I'll really start getting lonely, but I get to see them in a couple days, so it's not too bad. Okay, today is day 148 in the vlog, and we're looking at Proverbs 10, 11, and 12. At this point in the book of Proverbs, we are taking on a uh, different flavor, kind of genre of the Proverbs. Um, starting in Proverbs 10 and then really going all the way to the middle part of chapter 24 of Proverbs are just a bunch of like wise sayings from Solomon. So, you know, there, there is some connectivity here, but they, they do seem a little random, just kind of thrown in there like here. Uh, if you're wise, you're going to do this and a fool does that. And so it's going to be a little jumbled up, but... Uh, this will be a good time and a good section to go through here over the next couple days. What is happening in these three chapters of Proverbs is we're starting to get a little uh, like introduction into how Solomon really views wisdom and then just some key characteristics that differentiate those who are wise and those who are foolish. One thing that we see throughout these chapters is that you can make a notable distinction between those who are wise and those who are foolish based on their speech, what they say. And, and often, the wise will be the one that refrains from saying too much, and the fool is the one that's kind of babbling along and really doesn't know what they're saying. But in discerning those who are wise and those who are foolish, you can quickly note uh, where they kind of fall in terms of the things that they say and even how many things they say. Another uh, way that we distinguish those who are wise and those who are fools here are uh, based off of work ethic. The wise will usually have a strong work ethic and it's 
uh, noticed in the produce, in the fruit that it's produced in their lives as they're working hard and being diligent. You know, as we follow Jesus and as we're, as we're Christians, sometimes like good works and working hard and being diligent, it has a negative connotation to it because yes, we're not saved by our works, but as followers of Jesus and as people that are wise, we ought to be diligent workers. We should work hard at whatever it is that God has called us to do and work with integrity in whatever it is that that thing might be. The fool is the one who is lazy. The fool is the one who kind of does the bare minimum just to get by, but not, doesn't really commit themselves to the work that's set before them. And it's shown in their produce that they don't get a whole lot, that there's not a whole lot of return because they're not pouring a whole lot into the work. Also, you can differentiate between someone who's wise and someone who's a fool based on how they respond to criticism, how they respond to correction. The wise person receives correction and receives criticism. Uh, they realize that they don't have it all together and that they need to surround themselves with people that are well experienced, that are wiser than them so that they can learn. The wise person is constantly learning and growing. The fool thinks that they have it all together and their reaction towards criticism and correction is, oh, I'm, I don't need that. They, they put it off and they don't heed the counsel of those around them. And, and it appears too in, in these chapters that, they're, that, that the righteous and the wise seem to be synonymous, as well as um, that the fool and the evil person are kind of synonymous as well. Which is very interesting because, you know, we are made righteous not by our own hard work or our own merit, but based off of what Jesus has done for us. And so in a way, as we receive Jesus and as we're in Christ, there's a type of wisdom that we have. You know, ultimately what's, what's kind of happening here is if we could kind of bring it all into this like one phrase is, it will end well for the wise, and it will end badly for the fool. There are a lot of other things that we can note that to differentiate between those who are wise and those who are foolish, but I just encourage you to think about the things that we mentioned and where you kind of fall in those categories. Do you receive correction or do you uh, go against it and don't want, have, or don't want to have anything to do with it? Is your speech uh, reflective of someone who is gentle and wise and doesn't just babble on and say whatever comes to their mind regardless of the consequences? Where, where are you at even in terms of your standing with Jesus? Are, are you righteous? Have you trusted in him for salvation? Are you righteous? Are you wise in that sense? Or have you never put faith and belief in Jesus? And are you in this position as a fool, as an evil person that needs saving, that needs redeeming? Where are you at? Like, it's, it's way better to be wise than it is to be foolish. And the crazy thing is, there is a huge distinction between the wise and the fool. Like, they're, they're very different people, and uh, they, it would appear that they are uh, worlds apart in terms of the way that they live. But the difference between, like, say, a fool becoming a wise person or even a wise person becoming a fool is so small and minuscule. Like the word says, and we've said this often, that if you want to be wise, that you just ask. You ask God, you pray, you seek him. And as you do that, those who are foolish, those who are simple, they become wise, they become righteous. And I think for the wise person, if becoming a fool, it's just as simple as them growing prideful and thinking that they have it all together and they don't need any help and immediately they then become a, a fool. It's just, it's just crazy to me how, how different the wise and the fool are from each other, but yet how quickly we can go from one to the other. And it's a reminder for us to trust in Jesus, to remain humble and to constantly be seeking him in prayer and asking him for wisdom.